if I may, um, to that question, does that mean that one should not engage in what we could call useless speech, like talking about the weather and that kind of thing? I mean, yeah. Well, I think in, during our last session there was something about uh, useful activities or something, or something that I answered. I said something about um, painting or cooking or something. I said that if it's useful, yes, if it's beneficial, then we, we could. If it's uh, not beneficial, then somehow it's better to, to leave it. Similar, I think, in the, in the context of the speech. Um, <coughs> not to say that, you know, it's because it's useless that um, in a certain context it is useless that therefore we have to, you know, leave it. I think it really depends on different, different contexts and how much of a control we have, also composure we have as an individual, as a person. Uh, mm, if you feel like we are in, if you know, to not feel, if you know, that we are in control, well, meaning control in terms of um, having control over my uh, speech, thought, and action, then yes, I think one can, there are times where one can engage into uh, various speech, you know, engage in various topics. One can talk about weather, one can talk about what? A lot of things, painting, cooking, um, baking, all of that, sports, even. <coughs> as long as, it, because if it's, as long as it's beneficial, yes. Right? <coughs> the next question is, um, what is the difference between trust and devotion, and how do we apply them in our meditation? Uh, devotion um, and trust. I suppose in in English it might have a little difference of um, um, in terms of definition, but I think both of them are able to describe a little bit about what devotion or trust uh, means, either in uh, Sanskrit or either in Pali or in Tibetan. Um, so that's why I think sometimes we use the word you know, trust, sometimes devotion. I sometimes use the word like uh, confidence. So accordingly, I think in, you know, on, on what topic we are talking about, accordingly we use those uh, different different English terms to, to describe the devotion. Mm. In short, I think what is devotion is basically uh, the, uh, the inspiration that you get when you see the quality of something or someone. Yeah. I think that that's it basically. Yeah. That you feel inspired, you feel encouraged. Uh, to somehow follow in the same footsteps or path, and to want, and you want to make it your own. I think somehow that's what it means. Yeah. So now, in the question was trust and devotion in the context of um, how we can apply them in our meditation. Yeah, in our meditation, yes. So and now I think if. if Particularly, I think when we say meditation, if it's um, now involving a spiritual meditation, um, then yes, it plays a huge role. And uh, uh, within the meditation, then we really uh, um, it begins with that de uh, begins with devotion, and uh, it ends with devotion, basically. Yeah, because uh, um, from the very first. Um, moment of um, meditation, and the the, um, the attitude is that uh, we see the benefits 
or at least even if you don't see the benefit, somehow we have an idea, we have hope that there is benefit. Uh, initially, it could be because of one's own um, one's expectations in terms of it'll uh, calm me down, or it'll uh, give me some you know, some peace. It, it'll um, give me some uh, uh, way, give me some sort of uh, relief in terms of stress and so on. Okay, to begin, we can, we can begin like that. Um, but um, the overall, um, the point is that uh, somehow it begins uh, begins with devotion, meaning uh, seeing that there is a benefit. And then, of course, um, without a, um, breakage of that inspiration or devotion, it continues all the way, and even even when we conclude it, um, conclude or, or rise from meditation, uh, we also rise with devotion. Also, that's why then we are able to as aspire at the end. That's why we at the end we also make dedications as well because we see the benefit. So it's 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 uh, it's naturally there. Yeah. Last question is: Can you please explain how best a true Buddhist can lead a normal, non-monastic life? Mm. No, probably, I think following in terms of guide, uh, a guidebook. Um, the letter to a friend by Nagarjuna is almost like um, the um, basic um, guidelines that A non-monastic or non-ordained person would would have to live, let's say. Yeah. So it's, it's basically there. But either way, there are equal equal challenges. Yeah, that's the thing. Mm. I guess it's um, it really is an individual thing. And also, uh, according to one's own karma, it's also different too. Uh, some may have the motivation, but maybe lack the circumstances. Some may have the circumstances, but maybe lack the motivation. Uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, entering an ordained life, of course. But sometimes, again, due to circumstances, probably the other way around might be even more beneficial. You know, So it's a really hard thing to say. But nevertheless, uh, for uh, in order to ensure uh, Buddha Dharma um, for the benefit of sentient beings, of course, the um, the monastic sangha is crucial. Yeah, uh, without it, I would say that it's very um, it 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 will be very very difficult uh, for Buddha Dharma to to, to flourish. Yeah. Um, that was one of the very first reasons why I think um, our historical Buddhist hegemony established that Sangha. Yeah. And of course, um, I think he didn't intend to somehow um, develop uh, that system, monastic system, so that he could convert all, you know. But somehow, um, according to their wish, uh, according to one's own uh, inspira- aspiration, and then to to have that access, I think. So yes. Those were the questions from okay. Facebook for this week. So. Yes. Hello. Uh, 
could you just say a few words about what you mean by beneficial? Oh, oh yeah, good point. <coughs> yeah. Beneficial, like that term, I think I've used it a few times during the topic of uh, like the, the question of speech, yes? Yeah, beneficial in terms of um, from a Buddhist point of view, uh, when we use the term beneficial, it often refers to two, two things, I think, or maybe one thing. Um, beneficial in this life and the next. That's one way of putting it. And the other is that um, <coughs> beneficial in terms of it will help us reach liberation and then gain Samyak Sambuddhaya. Samyak Sambuddha. So, beneficial in terms of in that way, yes. So in order, uh, if it helps, if by having, um, what was it? Mm. Uh, we can engage in um, pointless speech. <laughs> we can whistle, hum, uh, Yes, um, complex. Too many that I cannot, uh, doesn't come to my mind. So basically we can do all of that if it's beneficial in this case. Maybe for some, uh, they like to hum. Maybe humming is their hobby, maybe it's their passion. Um, maybe it's the thing that really sort of makes their day. If they are not able to hum that day, it's a bad day, you know? <laughs> and cannot sleep, have nightmares in your dreams too, you know. So, um, for someone like that, um, probably to encourage them to uh, to reach liberation and enlightenment, let's say, maybe. You hum with them, you know. <laughs> Accordingly, yes. You hum a little, and <laughs> <laughs> and you get closer. You, know? but you hum twice, even closer. You hum a little more, you know, to a point where then one can have maybe conversation. And, and so on. So if you're in that kind of context, yes, I think it's beneficial to hum, to engage in, what was the right word? Non-beneficial speech, no. Because it, um, yeah, useless. Useless, yes, useless speech, yes. Useless speech. So similarly, whether it's speech or Actions or thoughts? Thoughts? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, it's a question about reincarnation. I brought it yesterday in the class, and then, uh, like most here, I'm from the West. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see in the teaching that it's, it's very important that we don't pursue the Dharma only for this life, but it's really for many lives. Oh, yes. But I still, after many years, mm -hmm. am not convinced about the candidate. So what? Does it matter? <laughs> maybe not. But I was thinking maybe you have some... I'm sort of... I've seen films, I've read this, and I'm <laughs> talking about... And, uh, 
some okay. it would be really nice to get this conviction, this trust. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you lost me there when you said you saw you've seen films, you know. <laughs> Well, documentary. About <laughs> this. No. That's better. That's better. <laughs> of course. No, I really understand your point. Yes, it's true. It's one thing that I think it's not just yourself. I think I think most of us I think have that difficulty actually to to really able to uh, believe it or accept it from the depth of your heart that there is a rebirth or reincarnation. But like I said, um, the point here is, I think, uh, if we understand that, um, well, uh, will it help us to be, or to to become, or to continue being a decent, decent human being or person? I think may probably again. That's last time I used the term borderline. Yeah. I think in my own case it could sort of help me to really diminish the importance of this line. Okay. And therefore expand my well down activity. Okay. And oh well, so that's that's also possible. Well, once you have that kind of enthusiasm, normally, I think, um, probably you have uh, um, a higher chance of actually experiencing uh, what you seek, let's say, because of that drive, because of that enthusiasm that you uh, want to see it for yourself. But at the same time, must make sure that this sort of um, um, expedition, let's say, uh, doesn't uh, start uh, with high expectation, I think, uh, with a goal, basically, what I'm trying to say, with a goal or aim or to uh, reach a finishing line and so on. If you do that, then more and more disappointments will uh, rise on the way or at the starting point and there's also a high risk that we might even um, be discouraged in this pursuit of uh, finding what we're looking for. So in the meantime, well, the, the best thing that, that all of us can do is actually uh, follow probably simple, simple logics, uh, the logics that, that are given, uh, particularly to, to, to focus on causality. Yeah. Uh, rather than uh, reincarnation, probably it's better to, to focus on causality. That's why I think it does, although Buddhism does, Buddhism's uh, reincarnation is a very important part of Buddhism, nevertheless, that it isn't like the most obvious um, uh, it's a topic, uh, you know, obvious subject. Instead, is causality actually, yeah. and I think there's a there's a reason I think because causality is easier to engage, it's easier to experience, uh, and be and because it's very simple, quite simple actually. Whereas rebirth is quite a mysterious thing, yeah. Yes, there is that charm because it's an unknown thing, but nevertheless, it's, it's because it lacks simplicity, it takes a long time. So instead, focusing on causality and focusing on uh, the, the various different types of causes, various different types of conditions, and the various different types of um, results, particularly in the Abhidhamma Kosha, uh, or in general in Abhidhamma, uh, it uh, talks, describes very well about the different types of causes, conditions, and results. And 
of the very different mental events and what is it the different types of um, positive negative in between neutral mental events so if we if we have that uh, first of all um, memorized and uh, then if you meditate let's say you know if we meditate on the on the impermanence of uh, impermanence of speech let's say then I think we are able to pinpoint better and then we are able to somehow relate it uh, relate that to uh, rebirth and reincarnation better otherwise it will be just basically um, trying to pursue or go after something that is quite not to say impossible but really really far to far to reach Yes. I have a question about merit. Actually, two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the increase of merit helps us to increase also emotion. Yes. Um, understand the teachings of Guru better or increase the confidence of the student. Yes. And the second question about merit is can we believe that merit is also protecting us from expression of negative karma from previous lives? Um, I ask this question because I see lots of uh, very accomplished lamas mm -hmm. with, I imagine, a huge amount of uh, accumulations and they still go through very difficult situations of um, sickness of close ones or things like that. So I wonder if this is a kind of shell that can protect us from purifications or, or it doesn't work like that, it's not interconnected. Hmm. So first thing is about uh, how to develop. If accumulation of it, positive deeds yeah. help us increase the emotion towards It definitely does. <coughs> uh, we're supposed to be in the um, stage or phase of um, path of accumulation. Sorry. So, right now, almost uh, every aspect of um, uh, activities uh, or dharmic activity, let's say, is all, all mostly about uh, um, accumulation. Yes. So, as we increase in that, as we persist and continue in that, then yes, we will develop a more and more, so how to say, um, so what basically a stronger connection yeah yes and secondly then you said that can we the hope that accumulation will, will help us uh, not to experience too much uh, <laughs> <laughs> it will it will uh, it will help to decrease yes uh, decrease um, what is it and subdue um, past karmas, yeah. Like, uh, for example, when um, Ajata uh, I forget the name completely. Uh, sorry? Yes, Shastra. Yes, Ajata Shastra. So when he had uh, um, started to realize. Uh, what he had done in terms of uh, having uh, well murdered his uh, parents and uh, done other many um, uh, heavy let's say negative karmas uh, when he once again of course then tried to um, purify them of course for wholeheartedly of course out of fear but nevertheless diligently when he when he did um, he was able to really reduce, yes, due to his accumulation, he was able to reduce the very uh, um, karma that he would actually face in his own life. 
in terms of experiencing um, well, what is said in the sutra is this, the uh, experience of the hell realm. Yeah. So instead of actually, um, instead of having to uh, to be born in, in, in that realm, uh, within the um, dream, uh, he was able to somehow experience the whole you know, experience and then overcome it, or basically overcome that particular debt, yeah. pay off that debt of karma. Yeah, there are many, I think, um, uh, occasions like that.